everybody. Today is Wednesday, February 29th, and as part of Plan As You Go month, I am going to be setting up my bullet journal for February 2020. But before I do, let's take a second to just kind of glance through. I'm not going to go too deeply into it because I've been doing Plan As You Go all month, but I have just a post-it note in there of something I want to kind of hang on to. But as I will, I, my goal this year is to like really go back to basics with the writer Carol system of bullet journaling, really, really not add a bunch of extra random frou-frou shit. So I think it is going to be helpful to kind of glance at what I've done so far and see how it's been looking. So this is my journal. It's a Lois term uh, 1917. I have been keeping up with the index. The only thing I still have to do is wrap up January and I still have a couple days left. So that won't end. I kind of know where it's going to end though. I put my goals in and I dated them January. January 2020 and I will rewrite them in April I think when I hit the first quarterly check-in in my power sheets and I revisit them because some of them may get changed. I'm already thinking some of them may get tweaked. Here is my future log. I haven't done anything with this yet. I'm still not sure kind of how I want to use this because I keep all my future planning on a Google calendar. I'm open to suggestions, but right now I'm I'm not really doing anything with this. Here is my January task list and calendar. And I had originally used this to put in like the timeline for my goals, but I think this next month I'm just going to put appointments down because I missed a couple of appointments this month despite having them all over the place. So I figure maybe if I reiterate them again, then that will help me remember. As for my task list, I got almost everything done on here. The few things I didn't get done with a couple of exceptions, I feel like there were circumstances. So as an example, the quarterly tax documents, I, I can check it off because I have gotten everything I can together so far, but I haven't actually gotten it all together because it hasn't all gotten to me yet. The budget that that's on Jesse and I for not sitting down and doing it. Painting RJ's wall, it's been too moist, but Jesse's gonna be off next week, so I'm hoping to get it done then. And then this branding was kind of an afterthought and I've sort of worked on it, but not really. Here is my 2020 meal shit, as I called it. This is for my monthly meal planning challenge. And in January, I did a new crock pot meal every, once a week, five different recipes, and I'm pretty sure all of them were hits. So that was a big hit that month. The next month we are going to do soups. I wanted to save Instant Pot for a while because I felt like doing Instant Pot and Crock Pot right after the other would be a little too easy. So February is going to be soups. I've also kept up with my Curly Girl Tracker. My hair is overdue for a wash, but I just, I have blood work this morning and I just had zero fucks to give about my hair. Now, as I flip through, you're gonna just see there's some pages that have notes on them and then there's other pages that are just the stamped dates and the bullet journaling. And I'm finding this very satisfying, more notes more bullet journaling, some analytics and content ideas. So far I have read, I believe 10 books this year, which is actually pretty good for me. I haven't started worrying about this yet. Some notes from a couple of the books that I read from the library, more bullet journaling, more bullet journaling, bullet journaling, blah, 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 blah. And then we're here to today. So what I am going, so that's where I'm at. So far I have used up about 33 pages in this bullet journal. So I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get a whole year into here, but this has been very satisfying. It's not one of the fanciest ones. You know, people who draw on all their layouts and do all their doodling and everything like that. That's not this bullet journal and that's not right now what I'm doing. It's working for me and I think that that's what's important. Before I start saying it for February, there's this page and I want to set a collection up. Now that the new Skillshare class is up, I really want to dig into painting the next series of flowers that have already started. And so I had an idea came actually from what I was talking about in my Skillshare class to get a tracking system here. On my Kanban board for the new series of flowers, it's one post-it that says paint 12 flowers. I didn't want to load it up with all of these different pieces. So all of my post-it notes actually have to do with like paint the 12 flowers, do all the scanning and all the printing, you know, all of that. So kind of in bulk. And so here I want to get a little bit more granular and track each print. And what I'm actually going to do on this page, because I don't need a whole page for one series, is I'm going to do two grids so that I have series two, and then I'll be ready for series three as well. And if this works, then I can do it for series four and so on and so forth. I have about eight different steps that I want to check off per flower. I need space for 12 flowers. So I need to have that grid drawn in here and I want to have one here and one here. And so that's what I'm going to work on right now. And by the way, I am still using the Pigeon Letters Monoliner. This is the 01. I'm just really enjoying this pen. And I overshot already, but that's okay. I'm the one making this grid up, so does it really matter? Probably not.
and I overshot again. And I fucked up again. God. That's okay. You can't tell I fucked up. It's not like it's obvious or anything. The steps here are underlayer, which is my watercolor layers, the cut, the colored pencil layer, finishing touches, scanned it in, edited it, tested it as a print, then taken the pictures and done the listings for it. And there's other steps to getting them up, but those are the ones per individual painting. So far I have two paintings started, and so I just put that in there. But this will be for series two and then series three fuckery flowers across the top. That's page 35 and I'm going to end January on page 34 because I don't imagine I'm going to need any more space for January. All right, so that is this particular tracker, series two. I'm just coloring it with a mild liner really quick. So then next we're going to put in February's task list and calendar. And I'm actually going to move here. I did the calendar. What did I do? I did it. One, I just, I highlighted the days, but I'm gonna also highlight the numbers because I'm gonna have some days off for Jesse that I need to mark, oh hi Mark. And so, yeah, anyway, let me get started on my calendars right now. And I'll actually start writing this in the, the index first. February's page 36. I love doing this like bubble cursive. I think it just looks super nifty. It's a little sloppy, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put my custody in on the day of the week, and then I'm going to put in Jesse's time off on the date of the week. I believe those are the days he has off. Now that we've got days off and custody put in, I am going to fill in all of my appointments. I pulled a bunch of them off of my Google Calendar and I'm just gonna reiterate them here and that's just gonna be what I do. The problem I'm gonna run into is on days where there's a lot happening. Like for example, on Saturday, I have a book club live. I have an appointment with the paving people to get an estimate and then we're gonna go out to dinner. I'm not even gonna put that on here but the acapella shows at seven. So like, I'm gonna have to do it like this. Wrong pen, I don't wanna be that juicy. So if I have more than three things during a day, I don't know if I have any more than three things during a day on this list, but if I did, I'd be fucked. There is my calendar for the month with just appointments and a few patron things I wanted to keep in mind. I'm already tired. <laughs> All right, task list time. Mostly what I'm gonna be pulling here are the handful of things I know I do every month and stuff off of my power sheets. And I will add to it as time goes on. Okay, here's my task list so far, and I know it's gonna grow, it always does, but it's got basic stuff on here, plus some things that I know are specific to this month. Now, I think one thing I do wanna add into here is a page for time tracking. The time tracking will happen with an app and my timular, which I'll talk a little bit more about in an upcoming video. However, I am gonna wanna keep track of the weekly results in my bullet journal, but I'm not ready to put that page in yet until I have some results to put in and I have an idea of how I'm gonna format it. I am just gonna continue with this style of bullet journaling though, just pulling things off my task list and getting them done throughout the rest of February because I'm enjoying it so far. I know it's not a super fancy bullet journaling spread. I know it's not like super doodly. I haven't like splashed watercolor or spooge gouache or anything like that all over this thing, 
but it's working for me and I think that that's what's important. I am excited though for how this is working. I feel like it's this like twisting my bullet journaling back around to the like kind of more traditional Ryder Carroll style bullet journaling has been really helpful for me, regardless of whether or not I feel inferior to all the fanciest bullet journal people on the internet. I don't really feel that inferior, maybe a little bit. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below how your planner systems are going so far now that we are about at the end of the longest January ever. Are you going to be making changes? Are you feeling good about where you're at right now? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.